So, um, uh, so uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Boon Tan. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Intel's uh, Open Source Technology Center. Um, my goal today is to basically give you a brief introduction to what Clear Linux is and talk about its, uh, you know, its distinct features, all right? So, and feel free to stop me along the way and ask questions. Um, it would be good to be, have it as an interactive session here. Okay. So the agenda that I'm going to go over is why, you know, the Clear Linux OS. Uh, I'll talk about the security and performance features of Clear Linux, and some of the, you know, the distinguishing features of Clear Linux how, as it compares to other distros. And then I'll talk about how you can easily customize your own version of Clear Linux very easily with some of the tools that we make av available. Okay. Okay, so why Clear Linux? So as more and more intelligent devices and systems get connected to the internet, we believe that the operating system that run on these devices must meet the demand of modern day usages, right? The demand of these modern day, uh, you know, of th these usages means that the, that the operating system should be uh, performant, it should be secure, and it should be easily customizable and it should be easily manageable as well. And we believe that you know, the, the operating system that meets these criteria is, uh, is actually the, the Clear Linux OS itself. Clear Linux is an open source uh, operating system, completely open, uh, and it's optimized for performance and security. And it is designed to work in any range of uh, you know, environments, right? From the cloud all the way to the edge. And it is very easy to customize and it's easy to deploy. Um, so people have asked, you know, what's, what is it based on? So uh, the answer to that is Clear Linux is actually designed from the ground up. Um, it is based on all the learnings that we've had in, you know, in the Intel OTC Center from the years and years that we've, com you know, contributed to basically open source projects, right? So there's a lot of learnings we, we've had and we put all the best features and all the things that we know into Clear Linux. It is an industry blueprint to that incorporates basically all, uh, you know, that gives you the best performance capability on Intel hardware itself, right? Um, you know, if you buy the latest hardware or something like uh, you know, or you have Intel hardware, we'd, you know, we'd rather you be using uh, a newer operating system that has the best, that takes advantage of the hardware instead of using a three-year-old OS that you, know, you can't take advantage of what you just paid for, right? So we want to give you the best performance and that's why Clear Linux is there, is basically it knows how to take advantage of all those things. We work to optimize it as much as possible for Intel. Um, that said, it does run on AMD and it does also runs on ARM as well. So we have, you know, Intel has FPGA hardware solution and we know that it runs on uh, FPGA for sure, so. Um, <clears throat> Clear Linux is available on our website at clearlinux.org. You can get it on uh, web uh, cloud solutions as, such as Azure and AWS. You can find it on Google as well. Um, we have many ways to you know, run Clear Linux. Uh, so there's also Docker as well. So, okay, so let's talk about security, right? Um, <clears throat> so security is very, very important for Clear Linux and for Intel in general. Uh, we want to make sure that the software that you're running is secure. So what we do is we actually stay in, you know, we do a constant uh, CV scanning all the time. Um, we, if there's any patches or anything that needs to go out, we'll get it out in less than 24 hours, right? So we don't wait three months, we don't wait th six months or a year to basically roll out the next release of patches. Um, we are a rolling release. Um, we do, uh, we, on average, we do up to 10 releases a week, so they're, you know, there's small incremental updates, but any updates that needs to get out, we'll get it out as soon as possible, so you don't have to wait for it. Okay? 
Um, so uh, in terms of security, we also offer a unified trust store. So this is where you, you know, your certificates can be stored, right? Um, that way you don't have to deal with uh, multiple uh, you know, trust stores in, in, in like certain distros have multiple and I, I've heard from developers that it can be quite a pain to basically have to deal with multiple ones. So uh, a unified place is where you know, it makes it easier. Um, in terms of industry standard security features, so out of the box, um, the, some of the software that we install, we configure them to be as secure as possible. We close up a lot, you know, loopholes or you know, un, unknown ports and so forth, so that it, it, when it, it, out of the box it's, it's secure, and then you have the choice to basically go and configure what you need for for your own uh, usage for it. Okay, so in terms of performance, uh, uh, so in terms of performance, um, we actually optimize, uh, you know, uh, throughout the entire stack, right? We don't look at just one area of the operating system. We look at, you know, the kernel, we look at the drivers, we look at runtime, we look middleware, all up and down, the, you know, the stack, right? We want you to get the best performance and the best uh, user experience out of an operating system and the software that you install on Clear Linux, right? So we do a lot of work to make it uh, better for, for the user. <laughs> so these are, these are some of the things that we do to basically uh, optimize the OS to run best on Intel hardware. So uh, at the kernel level, right, we ship, we always ship at the, with the very latest and we, we do make uh, older kernels available as well if you need it. So, um, and then in terms of library, we leverage runtime optimizations and that allows you to basically auto-select different libraries at runtime. So for example, if the AVX2 and AVX512, right? So if, uh, if, a particular, if the hardware that you have uh, will support AVX512, and when your software starts up, we will dynamically select that one instead of going to an older one, right? So you, you get the, the best of both, uh, you get the best in that sense. And then in terms of compiling software, we, uh, you know, we use uh, compiler flags that basically, uh, uh, that t uh, aggressive compiler flags that takes advantage of the hardware that we have on there, right? So, okay, and then on the latest hardware, our AVX optimization library is selected uh, at, at application runtime, just as I, I was stating earlier, so, okay? Let me know if you guys have any questions. So here's an example of some of the optimization work that we do for the Tensor, TensorFlow uh, library, uh, right? So uh, that we ship. So uh, at the kernel level, we tune, uh, you know, we tune the kernel for critical workloads. Um, uh, the glibc library, we tune, uh, you know, we add additional routines for AVX 512. And then for Python, we add the AVX, uh, AVX2 and AVX512 optimizations for Python. And then for, the, for these uh, modules, uh, we optimize them the, like the NumPy and the Pandas. And then we have uh, you know, AVX512 optimizations for the Eigen uh, C++ template uh, library. So, and then Obviously, we use the latest GCC compiler and we use all the flags that basically, uh, so that it would take advantage of the hardware that's available on, that you have there, so. Okay, so uh, some of the other distinct, uh, distinguishing features of Clear Linux. So Clear Linux works at a bundle level. It doesn't, uh, people have always asked me like, you know, which package manager do you use? So we don't use a package manager, we use, we deliver software through bundles. A bundle basically consists of uh, packages, but we, res but we, what, inside the bundle, we list all the packages that you would need for that bundle to work. A bundle is a functionality that you install, not an individual package that you install. So as an example, uh, like in, uh, let's say that, you know, you want, 
uh, Kubernetes, you want to enable Kubernetes on your, on your system, right? So what you would do is you would install our, what we call our cloud native bundle. The cloud native bundle consists all of the Kubernetes capability uh, binaries and you know, any dependencies that it needs to install to, in order for Kubernetes to work out of the box, right? That way you don't have to go and search for yourself, oh, I gotta go get this package, I gotta go get this package, and I gotta go get this package, right? So at, on, on, at the development side bundle, or sorry, at the uh, build time on our side where we curate the bundles, we, we have the list of packages in there, and then what gets delivered to the client side at the end of the day is actually a list of files that are broken down from the packages themselves. I hope that makes it clear to people, right? So, so the, the clients doesn't have any concept of what a package is, it just installs files. And the files are basically, uh, we, when, we, when you install a bundle, you get a manifest and the manifest lists all the files that gets installed with that. Okay, so again, we, we resolve all the dependencies at the, at the upstream side, not at the install or runtime. Um, we also, uh, again, we curate many, many bundles. We have uh, close to about 200 bundles at, at this point uh, uh, from, clear, uh, from our upstream side there. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, in terms of updates, so this is our update principle. Um, so again, we don't work at a package level, we work at a file level on the client side. So if there's an update, uh, the update is very, uh, very small, right? Generally, it's a, what we do is we push out delta uh, updates. We don't, so if there's an update inside a particular package, for example, typically in other distro, you would basically have to deliver the entire package over and then go through an install process to update it, right? What we do on Clear Linux is that we, if there's a small, you know, whatever the delta update is, we send that delta and then we patch it into the system itself. So it's, it's quite small. So it's lightweight, it's incremental. So like I said, we do, uh, we do about, you know, on average 10 updates a week. So that way, you know, you don't have to, you know, take down your system to do a big update or anything like that. It's a rolling release, so it's done in the background. Um, so we do a whole system update, so that means that you don't, you, you don't choose what you update on your system. When you go from one version of Clear Linux to the next version of Clear Linux, whatever bundles you install in that system, if there's any update in there, everything gets, whatever gets updated, gets updated to the, in the next version of Clear Linux itself. So, and the, how we control, we have a version control method where you just have the version of the OS itself. You don't, so, and then, then that version number basically dictates what, what, what list of packages and the versions that go into that version of Clear Linux, right? So that way, uh, if you, if you have, like say, if your coworker is running version 10 and you're running version 10 and you both install the same set of bundles, you know for sure that you both have the same set of software, you would never have to guess, you know, try to figure out, does, do you have this and do you have this, right? That guarantees that it, it makes it easier to compare systems uh, and for development purposes or validation Usage, use cases, it's very easy, and even for deployment, right? So if you're deploying, you know, a farm of servers and they're running a particular version of Clear Linux in the same set of bundles, you know that you would never have any discrepancies between them because the version number basically dictate what goes into that. I hope that makes it clear. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a hard one for people to get the concept of it at the very beginning, but anyway, um, <clears throat> the, uh, so, uh, by default, the OS is uh, set to auto-update, but you can disable that and choose to update yourself uh, whenever you want to, so you're not forced to take everything that we put out. Okay, so the other one is that we have a, um, a concept of a stateless operating system. So in some distros, when you install packages and software, configuration files kind of get you know, uh, inst uh, installed in different places, installed in ETC, installed in user, installed in, you know, in your home directory, right? What we do is that we segregate what the o operating system owns and what you own, right? 
So when, when, we, when you install software, when the OS installs software, all the configurations that it needs, the minimum configuration that is done to make the software work is put in slash user, which is owned by the, the operating system itself. And then if you want to do additional configuration or override uh, additional settings, you would put that in slash etc. So you as the system administrator would own that and then, and then you can also do additional configuration in, in your home directory. Now, let's say that, uh, let's say you actually deleted etc for some reason, right? Uh, in the clear Linux case, the system is still actually recoverable. It, it will still boot. What it means is that when you delete etc, it just sets the system into a factory uh, reset, right? So the, the minimum configuration that's in slash user still works, so the, the whole system will still boot, you just won't have your custom configuration in ETC. So in that case, what you would, as a practice, what you would wanna do is do all your configuration, you know, back up your ETC, and then if for some reason ETC gets deleted, you can boot it up, log in as root, set a new password for root, restore ETC, and you're back up and running in, in, in no time at all. <laughs> I'm seeing some eye rolling over there. I just <laughs> Does that make any sense? Yeah? Okay. Well, we're blowing through here, so. Um, all right. So, uh, so, we, so another thing that we have in Clear Linux is, uh, uh, is a telemetry solution. So this is an opt-in solution, right? So I, un, un, uh, I underlined opt-in because people always get you know, scared whenever they hear telemetry, right? So this is something that the user has to turn on. It's not something that's turned on by default, right? It's, it's, a, it's a lightweight client solution. Uh, the client side basically sends probes to, you know, uh, probes information to the, to the server side, right, of any software anomalies. Um, again, we don't collect, you know, personal identifiable information. It's mostly just information that you want to put into the probe itself for debugging purposes or for uh, OS, you know, uh, crashes or whatnot, right? Um, we have, pro I mean, the OS itself has probes in there, but if you don't turn it on, that stuff doesn't get sent to us at all, right? So uh, you can actually, so the telemetry solution is very customizable. You can actually set up your own telemetry solution using ours, and then your client, you can configure your client to basically send the telemetry solution to your server instead of to the upstream server itself, right? So we use this solution as a development a tool because it helps us to basically you know, figure out where all the bugs are, where the crashes are, and then we basically analyze that and patch it and then send updates right away, right? So this is how we're able to move fast uh, very quickly is that, you know, we get things out there. If we see, you know, any anomalies or any issue, we'll patch it and we'll get it out right away, so. Okay. So I'm gonna talk about uh, customization. Does anybody have any questions so far? <coughs> no? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I wonder uh, why you build it twice for the library. So we build it twice. I think we, what we do is we build uh, the library for the base hardware, uh, based older hardware, right? So our West, Westmere uh, platform. And then we also build for the newer version, the latest hardware, so that the dynamic linker can basically pick and choose at runtime. That's how I was explained to me, so. Yes? I have CDM on my KDM on my computer. Yeah. Okay, you don't see the KVM version? No. Okay. Oh, I think it's not the is it as a file? Yes. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to help you after this presentation. Uh, Okay, okay, great. Yes? Yeah, so you mentioned before that you resolve dependencies and bundles upstream. Yes. Yeah. You mentioned packages in that. Who's the distro that's an upstream package store? No, so we actually, so what we do is we actually build all the packages ourselves. So we take all this, the upstream sources, and then we go put it, feed it through our tooling, 
we have a tool called AutoSpec, which is basically an automated way of building spec, uh, spec fi uh, RPM files, right? What this does is you feed it a tarball and it analyzes the tarball and looks at the build patterns in the make file and basically helps it you to generate a spec file out of it and it builds the RPM for you. For the most part, it will do 80% of it, the work for you because it is able to intelligently figure that out, right? And, and then it'll spit out the tar file and then you put, and then, oh, sorry, the RPM file, and then you put the RPMs and then you, you, you basically put the RPM files into your, your bundle and then, you, and then we go through a build process where it decomposes the, the, you know, the bundle, the, the packages and then creates a manifest of all the individual files that goes into all the package, in the actual RPM package. We send the manifest to the client side and then the client basically looks at the, 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 the manifest and said, these are all the files that I need to install and then these are all the, you know, and then it checks, uh, it has, we, do, we send a hash for every single file so that we can make sure that it's uh, secure, right? So then, and then we go to install the file. So the client doesn't have any concept of packages at all. It just, you, it just basically installs file directly onto the system itself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that, that is a good question. Um, right now, we don't have like uh, the concept of a long-term release or, you know, we are, we're, we're, right now we're a rolling release, but we have heard that, you know, that, that question before and we are looking into if there's something that we could potentially do in the future to, to you know, basically provide that capability, right? But right now it's a rolling release and, but we do do, do, do a lot of QA and do a lot of work to make sure that what we put out is good. No, no, you can, uh, you can, the, the auto update is enabled by default, but you can disable it right away, and then you can then choose to update to a particular version that you want, right? Uh, another thing that I actually want to mention is that our update tool, which is our installer slash update tool is called SwapD, which is SWPD, it's software update daemon, right? And that tool allows you to basically specify which version of Clear Linux you want to go to. By default, it always tries to install the latest, but you can actually uh, roll back to a particular version if you wanted to, right? But what happens is that when you roll back or you roll to another version, it would basically look up the manifest for that particular version of all the bundles that you installed and then update those files according to that version of Clear Linux that you're trying to go to. But Sorry? You're right, right, exactly right. Yeah, you can go to an older version, but you know, people like to do that sometimes for you know, p different reasons, right? But, but the capability is there. Um, another thing that I, I really like about Clear Linux, the, the swap D tooling that we have is basically that if you, let's say that you actually deleted some files in your system, because we work with manifest, right? and bundles, what you do is you do, the, we have this capability called verify fix. What it basically does is when you ask it to do that, it basically looks at your, your bundles and it knows that what, what, what's in the manifest and it goes check your system and it goes say, oh, if this file is not there, it will actually go and fix that for you right away. Or if you, you know, modified something and it's not according to the, the hash for that particular file in the bundle, it will actually modify, restore that. It's basically a system restore capability, right? So it, it's a nice way of m ensuring that you, you have system integrity with this, this capability. Yes, sir? Is the bundle simply a meta package where you, know, you really have a list of RPMs? Yes. There's an RPM that describes this list? Exactly. It yes, yes. It's, it's a list of RPMs and then we break the RPMs down into individual files within the RPM, right? And that's, and the individual file is what gets sent to the, to the client side to get installed. We don't send the RPMs to the client side itself. So what, why do you still need the RPM construction? Uh, just because we're trying to use what's, you know, and we, 
we use the RPM packages just because that's what you know the rest of the world. We still do that essentially, yes. Can but you install an RPM on top of your you you can install an RPM on top of a on your system, but then the OS doesn't manage that, right? Because remember the ma the OS has to have the bundle list and the manifest that's in your, that's installed on your system, right? So if you install a pack, if you you can install an RPM package, but that means that if you ever do like a verify fix to check the integrity of your system, and if you give it this dash dash picky, it will go and find stuff that's not there and delete it out of the system because it doesn't know about it, right? The question I had was, do you keep a, a database of the installed packages? Y yes, yes, on the system, and so on. So we don't keep a database of installed packages, we keep a, a, a list of the bundles installed on your system. An RPM on top of it. Sorry? You could not install an RPM on top of it because you don't know what dependencies are already met. You, I mean, you can force install an RPM without, yeah, but you wouldn't know what, R, what dependency, you would have to resolve that yourself, right? But you can install an RPM, I've done it, so, and, but like I said, the OS doesn't know anything about it, so when you go do a system integrity check, it may delete it, right? If you tell it to. Yes? Um, where and how do you uh, resolve file subject caches from them? How do I resolve file? Uh, we detect that at the build side, so we do bundle testing on the build side so that we know what, you know, so that they don't collide with each other. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, we take care, we do all the hard work on our, on the build side, right? We have servers that basically go through and, you know, build these bundles and test them and uh, things like that. And then, again, once the, at the client side, all they're doing is just installing in the, you know, discrete files that's listed in a manifest. So you don't actually have to think about what your, you know, what the dependency issues are. So how do you expect the applications to be packaged? How do you expect, how do I expect third party applications? So an ISP application to be packaged against your system. So there, there is a way to do that. For third party, you can, we, there is a, you know, so because, Clear Linux is all open source, right? So we only ship open source software, so we don't package proprietary software at all. So if you had stuff that you want to... Uh, I guess the question I have is, should everything be built by you, or can somebody else build uh, you know, software that can be installed? Yes, you can build software that you can install, right? That's what I was uh, gonna get to. So. Um, so we have, uh, and, and I can talk about it in the customization area uh, uh, part of this presentation, but basically we have a tool called Mixer that allows you to basically create your own distro and you can actually create your own bundles and, and I'll talk more about it here in a bit, right? And then we have another tool called Mixin which is a wrapper for Mixer but that allows you to create your own bundle and put your own package in there and install, sideload it into an upstream, the upstream version of Clear Linux or instead of a forked version of Clear Linux. And I'll get into a little bit more about that. But, but keep asking me that question if this still doesn't make sense, all right? So, any other questions until, before I get into the next section here? All good questions. All right. So, uh, modular for customization and control, right? So on, uh, on this diagram here on the top right side, you, you know, the blue uh, box is here, right? So this is the normal upstream version of Clear Linux and the clients are using the upstream version of Clear Linux, right? They're getting all their updates from us, right? But let's say that you want to become your own OSV or you want a, a, a forked version, your own flavor of Clear Linux, right? You don't want to get all the updates all the time, you want to be in total control of that, right? We have tooling that allows you to do that, and that tooling is basically called Mixer, right? The analogy that I like to tell people about it is that, you know, you, you like to eat food, you know, uh, I don't know, tacos from, a, you know, the factory, right? And all the toppings that comes with it, but maybe you don't like certain, the certain things, ingredients in the topping, so you can go and redefine what those means. And the toppings are basically the bundles, and you can go and redefine what goes in the bundles itself, right? You're, so you're modifying what packages go in there. And then through the mixing process, it's able to basically generate 
uh, you know, your own uh, clear Linux image, right? So it becomes a forked version. Okay, so, uh, so the, the key part right here, it says here, you don't need to recompile the OS if you want to basically create a, a forked version of Clear Linux. Remember, a bundle is just basically a list of binary packages, right? And all the packages that we build are all available upstream on our server. So when you redefine a bundle and you specify a particular package that we already have, it will just pull the packages into your mix and build it for you so you don't actually have, actually have to recompile code at all, right? Um, the only time you would have to actually compile code to create a derivative of a clear Linux is if you want to basically uh, build your own, you know, your own software package, right? So for example, if you want to build, you know, your own Hello World software and we don't have it available upstream already, then you would go through the auto spec tool to basically build an RPM package and then you feed that through Mixer and then you build a bundle out of that and then you basically put that on your own update server where your clear Linux will then pull its updates from, right? So basically at that point you forked, okay? Does that make sense? So we actually use Mixer ourselves, so you can see at the top part right there, so there's clearlinux.org release, right? So every time we build a package and then we update anything in a bundle, we feed it through the Mixer tool itself, we generate bundles and we put it on our update server and then all the, you know, and our clients consume that, right? So that's the same way for you if you wanted to build your own version, right? You basically just set up a web server, you go through the mixing process, create your bundles, create your own version, of, you create, set up your own version of Clear Linux, create an image, and then your images would basically pull the updates from your server itself. So you're not uh, required to basically, you know, you know, you're not required, if you create your own version of Clear Linux, you're not required to every, take every single release that we put out, right? So this, is, this diagram here basically shows that, you know, these, the penguin here is basically all our, you know, daily or weekly releases, right? And then these up here are the upstream packages that we put incorporate into Clear Linux. Down here is your custom version right here, right? So you can choose and you can pick and choose which one, you know, which release of Clear Linux you want to put in and which bundles you want to put in there yourself, right? So you're not forced to basically take everything we, we release. So it's very, very customizable. So when security updates come through, how do you see? Security updates? Yeah. Well, security, I mean, every up, security updates all go through our normal regular releases, so. But yes, yeah, so you, you know, if you want, Well, you can pick and choose which, re which Clear Linux release we put out, right? And you implement every one of those with your security updates? Uh, do we specify which one has security releases? Like or? I said on the one on the left hand side here. Yeah. You guys have moved along. Yeah. And special meltdown occurs. Right. Come back and fix it here for me, the one that I've you would have to basically take the next rele the release that has the, the, the security patch and incorporate it into your mix, right? Okay, so you're not going to backport anything? No, right. We're, we're, we're trying to move forward. So when you say we can stay wherever we want, but it's not Well, you, yes, you can, you can choose which one you want, yes, uh, in the sense that you don't have to take every release, you're not forced to incorporate every release into your, into your mix. No, you're going to force me because you're going to backport. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if you want a feature, you have to go, you have to go up, update, yes. Just features, security. security features, yes. Um, so, any other questions on this at all? Yes, go ahead. Uh-huh. You, did, if you do, if you do an update, will the auto update be turned on? Is that what the question? Like, if I update, will SecureBit, for example, like be enabled again? And will I have to manually disable it? Every if you, if you do, if you, so when you disable auto update, it will be disabled, and then you can manually update to another version of Clear Linux that may have the Secure Boot update, right? So Oh, 
if, if, it's, if it's updated in the next version, if it's enabled, yes, you would probably have to do that. Questions? So, yeah, go ahead. Question. So the mixer, uh, it's just a chooser or it can build? I mean, how to build the package? So, so let, me, let, me go, let me go here real quick, hold on. Okay. Uh, I don't have that diagram here. So let me see if I can find it. Okay. Let me. I, hopefully, I can uh, describe this right here. Right. So this is this is the process that we go through. Right. So on the left side, we have a tool called Auto Spec. Auto spec is what builds your, your source and turns it into an RPM file, right? So this is basically RPM build, but it's highly automated for you, right? So you basically feed it a tarball, or, and then what it'll do is it'll generate these RPMs for you, right? And then what you then do is you go and create your bundle, which, con which contains your RPM files, right? And then you then, Mixer is what helps it basically generates the bundle for you. And what you do is you go and define what goes in the bundle as part of the mixing process. So Mixer works with RPM sources. It does, yes, exactly, yes. And AutoSpec makes the sources into the binary. Exactly. It, it's just like, you know, think of it as a, you know, a food preparation process, right? The auto spec is the part where you go and you know take the basic ingredients and cr and cook and make something right, and then mixer is the bundling process where you package it up before you ship it out for somebody else to consume it, right? So if I if I want to change, for example, the GDPC, mm -hmm. I uh, like uh, configure this auto spec, build my package. Mm -hmm. Different GDPC or even build the GDPC as a source tarball. Mm -hmm. But then, do I need to rebuild the whole the, the old packages? Because it, like the GDPC is it's required by other. Yeah. Uh, that is a good question. Um, I think if there's dependency, I think you may have to do that. Yes. But is it possible to like? feed this out of spec with the source tarball that is uh, uh, in the original Linux, clear Linux. Hmm. Do I need to find all these tar tarballs that you already have? Or? Uh, I don't, uh, so I, I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know that answer off the top of my head, but if you, uh, would you come to our, the Intel booth and I can find uh, someone to answer that question for you? Because that's probably, the developers are probably better at that than I am, so, yeah. But please come by. Okay. Questions? So in, the, in this picture you have here, on the left-hand side, you have a bunch of source star balls? Yes. Yeah, so, so we try to always use the latest version as possible, right? So uh, the tar, the, are you talking about from a tarball level or from just any? Three projects, which version of GDC do you pick? <laughs> or which version of uh, you know, the compression library do you pick? Right, we, we always try to incorporate the latest as possible. So we tend to, do, yes, we do that. If you needed an older version, then yes, you can go and probably, you know, recomp Recompile and build your own bundle using the older library or you know an older version that you want. I guess the latest version of uh, one particular project may 
cannot work with the latest version of another project. Right. Yes. Right. And and our and our developers are well aware of that and they try to pick, you know, make the the best balance that works for for users, right? You know, we we still use, you know, for example, with Python, we use we still we offer Python 3 and we also do point 2.7, right? But we're eventually we want people to basically be using the latest as, you know, as possible. Any other questions? All right. So, um, so, uh, so, basically, we have uh, all sorts of avenues for you to basically try out ClearLinux or use ClearLinux. I mean, uh, you know, you go to clearlinux.org. Uh, all our source code is completely open source. Again, it's a reference operating system. Uh, we would love it if anybody wanted to take any of it and incorporate it into their own, you know, steal it if they want to, right? I mean, it's, it's completely open, so. And we have a public IRC that you can go to for any questions or help that you might have. And then we also have a public mailing list as well. Um, I'm also doing demos downstairs, or uh, is it upstairs? I think it's upstairs, yeah. So. Uh, come by if you have additional questions that you might have uh, at the Intel booth, and I, I will be happy to try to answer as much as I can. And if I can't answer it, I'll get back to you over email and uh, get you the correct answer. So with that, it's uh, five till. We have five minutes, actually, no? I think it's 40 minutes, right? So, 45, okay. Any other questions? No? Thank you.